Hello everybody, this is Jen from Scrapping Posh, and I am here with the very last segment of my 221B Baker Street tutorial from the Graphic 45 Master Detective series. And I left off last video creating this, uh, decorating the inside of the living room, and I took this frame from, it was a frame around the, one of the cut aparts, and I am uh, mounting that with some slices of very thin pieces of chipboard to give it some dimension. I got a piece of parchment colored paper uh, laying towards the top of the screen there, and I distressed that with the Tim Holtz vintage photo. And then I'll layer that frame on top of that parchment and I'm going to pop up the skull, one of the skulls from the pattern paper with all the skeletons on it, the black paper. I'm going to pop that up right in the middle of the frame to give it a nice piece of uh, artwork in Sherlock's living room. Cleaning up some of uh, my cut aparts there. And now I'm going to finish wallpapering the entry entryway. And I just took some of that checked pattern paper for the right side there. And this is when I decide that I do want to include that subway sub shop so I've got to figure out a way to decorate that and I left it a mess because I thought I was going to box it off so um, before I do that I am going to go ahead and mount the picture above the fireplace and then I'm going to put that skull on the mantle and then here I have the border strip that look like the stamps and I'm going to cut out all four corners and that's going to be a decorative piece uh, it's going to be like a frame picture and I'm putting that one in the entryway and then I popped up the sides of Sherlock and Watson so that they were even with the fireplace. So it's a nice little quaint living room scene. And on top of the fireplace, I'm also going to add a spider on the frame and a, uh, one of the compasses on the right side of the frame and I added those two pieces because there were chunks taken out of the frame from the fussy cutting I did and then I have on the left hand side I am going to add from the 8x8 cut apart the top of that bookshelf and then I am cutting out a row of books and I'm going to mount those books on a piece of black cardstock to give them some dimension and I'm going to set them right on top of the fireplace like there's books stacked there And I'm just looking around for other things to put in there. And I'm going to finish decorating it at the end after I do the mini album. Because 
I want to make sure that I have enough embellishments and cut aparts or things that I've cut apart for the mini album. But I cut, I, I, I do include that at the end of this video, so don't think that you're going to have to wait another month to find out how I finish this off because I just cut out the mini album part. Now I'm making the back of the building so that it opens, it swings open, and that just consists of adding the hinge to one side instead of both. And I always have a wet cloth with me because when glue seeps out, it's nice to have something there to clean it up. And when the paper rolls and I just need something to smooth it down with, it helps. So next I'm going to add a hinge to the other side, but I'm only going to do it to... I think I do the front first. I'm placing three magnets along the hinge. Yeah, I put it I put it on the side of the building first before I put it on the back of the building. So I run a piece of tape along that hinge, stick the magnets down, and then glue them. And then I'll glue the other side I'm wrapping around the wall. And it bubbles up a little bit. So I just glue it back down and I use my towel to clean up the extra. And just work it out. Okay, now I'm going to this hinge on the side or on the back and just glue it to the back only. Sorry about the focus again. And then I am going to place these magnets. I place them the same way I place all my magnets. I stuck them to the other side first put glue on them and then let them stick to this side. Now I'm going to take this gusset and glue it all over that, the one that's already existing. And I think I end up, after I, I, I it's easier just to glue down one side at a time. I tried to glue them both down at the same time and it did not work well. So I can just use tape this time because it bubbles up less, distorts less. And then I just wrap it around the outside. So that there's several layers there. And it covers the magnets. So. Now I have the closure. And I put a decorative strip on there. It's one of the green decorative strips. I think it looks like ivy, kind of. If I had enough of them, I probably would have put it on each side. Sorry, I moved the camera there. It got so big that it was hard to maneuver. So yeah, that piece reminds me of Ivy and it kind of it triggers me to say, hey, this is where this opens, not, not the other side. So there's the back. Everything's hinged. And I just do some figuring now. I'm going to still do two floors on the right-hand side to continue the model, the effect of the two floors within the building. So the bottom floor is going to have that dark checkered paper on it. And I'm debating on how to cover the rest of that. At first I was I was I, I was thinking that I needed a hinge and then I thought no, it's not 
I don't need a hinge there. It's got plenty of hold. I just take my permanent marker now and go over the spots of chipboard that will be bare. And I end up taking just a strip of black cardstock and taping it to the left hand side there. Not a hinge, but just a cardstock. I do the same on the right, and then I use my permanent marker to color in any other chipboard showing. And that just takes care of what shows on the left and right. So my wallpaper for my bottom level on the door. Now, later on, I put magnets on this side to hold paper. And honestly, I should have done it right now. So if you want to do the effect where you have the picture frames that hold things up on this side, put a few magnets under there now. What I end up doing is effective. I cut out rectangles that kind of look like backs of picture frames and glue magnets under underneath that way. But if you really want them hidden, you could uh, put those directly onto the chipboard before you put the wallpaper on. Now I am preparing to work on the roof. And I got one gusset in the back and I'm just going through my chipboard to see if I can find something that works size wise and I end up this is about I want to say like three and three quarters by six but definitely measure your roof and I just take the two sides and hinge them together same way, black paper, one inch strip, scored at a half inch. I'm just using my nonstick mat to work on so I don't have to be too careful. Okay, now I'm trying to figure out how exactly I want to decorate this roof. And I'm going to do it before I put it up and I come up with the idea to use this Fisker's punch. It's a scallop punch um, and use two different kinds of paper. But while I was thinking, because I wasn't absolutely sure how to do that, I decided to decorate the inside some more. Sorry, I jump around so much. That's just what I do when I'm trying to figure something out. So I take that green kind of floral pattern for the top floor and then I use that cool border strip for in between the floors. Okay so now I've decided that I'm going to use black and that checkered cardstock, the same checkered I used for the balcony or the canopy. I'm going to use that for the roof. And basically, I take and cut a six inch strip of cardstock or patterned paper, and I punch the scallops on it, and then I cut it at about an inch. And it really doesn't matter how long you cut it or how, how wide you cut it because it's going to be covered up by the next layer of scallops. The only one you're going to see is the very top one closest to the peak. So I think the most important thing on this is to make sure that you have it uh, at six inches wide. And then there's the pattern paper I chose for the other half of the scallops, the roof shingles. And I do the same with it. I punch it, I cut it off at an inch or so maybe three quarters of an inch and then I just continue doing it. So here you, here you see that I've put the first layer of scallops down and I use the black first and then I have the smaller layer of the pattern paper and then another strip of black 
And I guess I'm leaving about a quarter inch between them. And I'm distressing them with the vintage photo again. And I think this gives a really nice effect. And the uh, most important thing is to make sure that you're straight across so that you don't have some some of the shingles like smaller than the other one and then when you get to the peak it's all crooked and diagonal so feel free to draw reference lines across your chipboard so that you can line up your shingles and I don't know if I go if I do both of these halves on this video or if I just do half of it but both of the halves are the same and I get to the very the peak of the roof and I decide that it would look better instead of having that patterned paper show I decide that it would look better to have the black showing so I took a really skinny piece of the black and put that on there I think it just has a better uh, blend so I'm putting a piece of border strip at the top before I put the roof on. And sorry, you couldn't see that, but. Now, before I put the roof on, I need to make sure that my building is square. So in order to do that, I'm going to add the third floor. And I cut this floor, I think in the first or second video, when I cut both of the other floors to ensure that they were all the same size. One of the things I wish I would have done was completely decorate the third floor before I put the roof on. You can't see much of it, but you can see some of it. So I have that. Um, I finally got a big permanent marker. <laughs> So I have the, the back of the roof, I want to be able to fold up and I c basically because I think that the back won't open unless it's folded up. However, I'm wrong. You can open the back up without the roof folding up, but it's still, it's still a cute idea. So I'm good with that. So I hinge only the front of the roof and you see me here just uh, gluing the hinges together and the other thing I wish I would have done was go ahead and glue that front hinge onto the roof because it does leave a space it doesn't stick because I didn't glue it and light actually comes through it so this is me trying to fix that and I'm sticking my fingers way back in there with some washi tape and that's that I'm just gluing the I guess the seams like underneath the roof so you can't see it and then holding it down so it sticks so yeah I wish I would have decorated a little bit before I added that roof on Uh, this is the black pattern paper with the skeletons on it, and I wanted to put the skeletons in the attic because I thought that was a neat idea to have a haunted attic. And later on, I also kick around the idea of adding another door on the inside and having skeletons in the closet, but I don't end up doing that. But it's a neat idea if anybody wants to do it. So now I slow down the video and I probably won't talk through this whole thing. Um, I'm putting the stairs together. I already had the stairs together once, well, half of them, and with all the moving around I was doing, uh, they fell apart, they, they fell off the building. So now I've got a couple hinges, and what I have is a couple strips of chipboard. They're a quarter by about six inches long. Well, the one is quarter by six inches long because it does stretch the whole span of the building. The second piece is about a quarter by three inches long. 
it only spans in front of the sub shop. So what I'm going to do essentially is put gussets on the bottom of the six inch piece so that I can attach another six inch step so that there's two steps leading into 221B Baker Street. And then I am going to add a gusset to the three inch side so there's an additional step going into the sub shop. And now that I've added the gussets on, it has something to hold on to. And I'm just going to play some music for you so you can watch this whole step making process. And after I get done, I use washi tape to decorate all the steps. So enjoy.
Okay, so now you just see me wrap and washi tape around the outsides of the steps. On this side, it needs a little bit more support, so I stick a piece of chipboard in there and glue it down. I wish I would have wrapped the outside of the steps before I wrapped the rest of the steps, so the washi tape would have stuck better. So, I'm just filling some spaces. I'm filling the spaces between the steps so it looks like one continuous step instead of several layers of rectangles or prisms sitting on top of each other. I'm pretty satisfied with how that come out. Now I am going to put magnets uh, on the bottom so that it's magnetically attached to the base. And these are a little thicker. I think they're about eighth inch thick. Uh, the magnets that... Uh, they're too thick to put in my mini albums. They're just too bulky. So th that's actually two magnets stuck together right there. I'm going to put a dot of glue on the top of each one of them and stick them right to the base where I want the building to sit. And then I'll know where the magnets go and which side they go on. And some of them stuck to the bottom instead of my base. And that's fine. You just pull them off and stick them back where they're supposed to go. The other way I could have done it is I could have stuck all the magnets to one layer of magnets to the base, covered it with paper, and then stuck the other magnets down. So now I'm using my big permanent marker. It took me like a week to get that <laughs> after I started this project. Coloring all the chipboard. And I have this black pattern paper with all the labels on it. And I use both barn door and vintage photo distress ink to distress the sides. And this is what I'm going to cover the base with. On the bottom, I use glue. And I'm just using this instead of my quick dry adhesive because I'm trying to actually use it up so I can throw it away. And on all the other four sides, I use, I'm sorry, that's the top of the base. On um, all four other four sides, I use the ATG tape. I feel that you should use glue on the magnets because they do have a pulling force on them. And I think the glue sticks better than the tape. So now I'm going to cover the bottom of 221B with a, that, uh, another piece of parchment paper. It's the same parchment that I made that picture frame with earlier. And again, I use glue. And then those two surfaces with the magnets are covered. And now I'm just going to finish decorating my box with the black pattern paper. Uh, the bottom of the box, I just use plain black cardstock so I don't waste any pattern paper. And I also glue that on because I think that, you know, people move it around. And you can see the glue through the pattern paper, but it's on the bottom, so I'm not worried about it. Now I give each one of these strips the same treatment that I gave the top, which is barn door on the outside, and then vintage photo. And on the back strip, uh, it's, I want to say it's eight inches long. I do have to splice a piece together, and you can't even tell. I think that's the piece that's spliced together. You can tell when it's upside down there. Other than that, you can't uh, tell. And I totally lied to you. I did glue on all the sides. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. And you're just going to see me glue on the rest of the sides. So, You guys, um, if you make it this far in the tutorial, 
you're going to have to tell me, uh, you know, what, what I did good and what I did bad and what I should change because I'm really clueless on how, um, you know, how, how you guys perceive this and what I'm doing. And I think I need to trim both of these up. I don't, I didn't take into account the outer edge or something. So yeah, any feedback would be greatly appreciated, positive or constructive. And um, let me know if the video speed is okay. I sped it up for you guys because this one's actually almost 50 minutes long. The other ones were all about a half hour. And five. So you're looking at like almost four hours of watching me do this. I didn't want to bore you to death. So. This is a handle from, I want to say Paper Studio. Possibly Tim Holtz, but I can't remember. I just basically line it up to exactly where I want it on there and get the E6000 out. I'm using this Amy Tangerine Paper Piercer meant for paper stitching to get through my chipboard. I place the brads through the holes before I put the metal on so that I know that they'll go through before I add the glue and all that stuff. So I add my E6000 to both sides. I place that handle back over those holes. I clean it up a little bit. And then I place the brads in. And then I just take, before I do anything else, I'm taking this mechanical pencil without the lead out and I am just cleaning up all the glue that oozed out. I didn't want to ruin my, my pick or my um, whatever that thing is, that ball tool that I use for scoring. I didn't want to ruin those things. So I just took a mechanical pencil that I had laying around to do that. Then I stretch the legs out on that. And again, I use glue to place that plain black paper on the inside. And I use plain black paper on the inside for a reason. Uh, I want to put a trap dr trap door in here. When I think of Sherlock Holmes, I think of mysteries and um, murders. And I think that a trap door goes along with that idea. So I just take and put black cardstock, line the whole thing with black cardstock. And then I cut this piece of chipboard down to, it's about five and a half by six, I think, but definitely measure. And as always, I use my permanent marker to cover the sides. And then I just use black chipboard, or I'm sorry, black cardstock on both the front and back to cover it. So it matches the inside of that drawer. And I do put a magnet underneath it, as you can see. And I do that so that it doesn't flop open if you don't intentionally mean for it to. And the idea behind that is you can hide secret notes or whatever underneath. So I do put a hinge on and I do that on the back side. And that's the bottom. And then there's the top piece.
And then because it is magnetized and it is a very close fit, it fits just right in there, I take a piece of black cardstock and just fold it in half and make a little loop of cardstock. But before I do that, apparently I cover the bottom with washi tape. I must be the, oh, I, I know what I'm doing. So initially I was going to use ribbon for the pool, but I didn't know how to attach it. So I started covering the bottom with washi tape, and then I thought, I'll just use cardstock. And that's what I'm doing right now. And the magnet's on the bottom side, so you don't see that bump. Okay, just messily covering the bottom with cardstock, coloring any, anything that's not covered, and then trimming off the sides, and then I'm going to run some uh, vertically on those sides, which allowed me to be messy with it. I didn't have to measure each piece directly. Okay, so now I'm gluing down my trapdoor in the back, and I leave it open until it's dry so that it doesn't get glued shut. You make sure it shuts all the way. And there you go, you got a trap door. And the fact that I put that washi tape on the bottom makes it slide even smoother than it did before. Okay, so remember before when I told you I was not finishing decorating it until after the mini album's done, you can see that the mini album is complete. <laughs> so. I'm not sure what I was thinking there, but what I'm doing is adding the balcony. Now, this is included in the cut file that I created. It's on my website, Scrapping Posh, www.scrappingposh.blogspot.com. And it does not want to cut out of flimsy paper. So this is a 110 pound cardstock and I don't have black 110 pound cardstock. I only have white. So I cut it in white and then I used my permanent marker to color it in. And then I very carefully just glue those seams together. There's no hinges because it's too small to fold anything that small to, to get it to stick. So I just glue it on the inside, get it to stick, glue it on the outside, and set it aside to make sure that it glues, the glue completely dries. So here it is glued. I'm using some glossy accents, excuse my head, and then I put it away. So now, while that's drying, I am going to take the back of the ephemera pack and cut out the little ephemera cards. Um, they're like previews of the ephemera cards, and they are perfect for pictures that hang up in the lobby. So, this is when I try to decorate the sub shop also. And you can see here, I added those magnets. To the door. And I'm just placing those little ephemera package cutouts on the walls like paintings. And on the right hand side, I put those magnets on there. I covered them with black rectangles of black um, cardstock and you see me just sticking things under there like that would be really cute to like stick pictures and stuff under I took the sticker sheet and cut out the faces 
and use those as portraits hanging on the wall there. And that was the skeleton. I was trying to find somewhere to put him, but he doesn't end up making it. Sorry. Sorry, Mr. Skeleton. Excuse my stand in the bottom right-hand corner right now. I have my camera not positioned correctly, and that's why it looks like that. Hopefully I fix that soon. So now I have to fix the sub shop. I put a floor in it, and then I take this cut apart, or it could be a, it could be from the ephemera, or yeah, the ephemera pack. I think it's a cut apart though from the eight by eight sheet. And then some of the same wallpaper that's up in the top. And I must have cut it too short because I pieced it together there. And then I put that uh, um, cut apart there, and there's like four guys on it. And I thought that was really neat because if you look in the sub shop window, then you can see those four guys like hanging out and doing stuff. And I just take a, paint, a piece of black cardstock for the ceiling. And then I couldn't figure out how to clean up that horrible mess I made. Here I'm trying to figure it out. There's some graphic 45 washi tape that doesn't end up staying. The sub shop doorways and windows are fragile because they're just made out of cardstock and glue. So I can't put a lot of pressure on them. What I end up doing is actually just coloring it all in with the permanent marker. And it's so far back, remember it's four inches back, that you can't really tell. So it was a good alternative. I color the bottom half and almost everything with the black permanent marker. I thought about putting some other decoration in there, but I haven't yet. And then I'm finishing this off with some black acrylic paint where I couldn't get my permanent marker just to get into the gaps. Who you guys, almost done. I know I'm tired of talking. I bet you're tired of listening to me. And just some more pictures for the walls. And I do make some flower pots and stuff for this afterwards uh, that is, aren't on camera. They are included in the cut file. And of course, you can just get miniature flower pots from the craft store if you'd like. And I take my glossy accents and I run a bead right along the bottom of that border strip. And then. I run a bead up both sides of the balcony. And I'm just taking some black acrylic paint and touching up along the sides where it's a little discolored or faded. And it really works well to cover that up. And then I run a bead along the bottom half of that balcony. Because literally, that's the only thing that's holding that on. It's not hinged or anything. And I waited to the very last to do that because it's going to be one of the most fragile parts. And I throw a, a femur card under there. And you guys, that is the end of my tutorial. So I hope you enjoyed it. And... If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. I appreciate all your comments and um, email me or leave a comment or you can leave a message on my blog. And if you have any suggestions of the next thing I should build, just let me know. Thanks again. I appreciate your time.